Thank you so much, uh, Bishop Kimani, and the leadership of Deliverance Church here in Zimmerman. I'm so happy and so glad to be here together with you in the presence of the Lord. Now, where the presence of the Lord is, there is fullness of joy. Bona sifu esana. Um, when uh, pastor asked those who are above 60, I, I stood in the hut. I, I stood in the hut. I am 62. I don't know when I was born exactly. I don't have uh, the day where I say it is my birthday. So when I was in Deliverance Church, I changed my purpose. And all my papers read that I was born on the... 22nd November 19 long ago. So whenever you celebrate your birthday uh, anniversary at Deliverance Church it's my birthday. Remember to send me a card. Amen. Just because of time let me just let's go just to the word of God and share together from the book of Joshua. Some years back we had a friend of mine who uh, was coming from a neighboring country and he had a problem of pronouncing our names before he adds the, word, you know, the letter T-H-E, the. So he would uh, stand up and call me the Mutua and he would call people, Hi, how are you the Joshua? How are you the so-and-so? So in the college we had a good time, we, we baptized each other. So I used to be called the Mutua. Somebody else was called the Malu, etc., etc. And one day he preached from the book of the Joshua. So I remember him for, for that. And today I'm remembering him as we read from the book of the Joshua. Turn with me to the book of Joshua, please. Chapter 1. Book of Joshua, chapter 1. Are you there? Amen. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I will give unto them even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall be not any man being able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto these people shalt thou divide for an, an inheritance the land which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And when thou have, and thou shalt have success. The final one, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord Thy God is with thee whatsoever thou goest. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. 
The Lord gave me a word that I want to share with you in an outline form. It is not possible just to finish all this, but just uh, create an appetite for us to want to read the book and the story of Joshua because it's a very sweet story, very inspiring and very, very encouraging. Bonus if you will. I call the title of my message, The Oil of Influence. The oil of influence. How is the oil spelled? It's O-I-L. It is very simple. Amen. One has a few way. Now, the Lord gave Joshua a surprise. Joshua has wo had worked with Moses for a long time. He served him. He was so faithful. He made sure that when they went to spy out the land, he brought a good report. And he was there together with Caleb, contenting, fighting, standing for what the Lord had said. Because when they went into the land of Canaan, there were a few guys who, ha, who were giants. They appeared to be giants. There were some genetic accidents that caused their body to grow beyond normal. And they were looking at them. The ten people came back and they spoke all kinds of things. And the good report of these two men was not listened to. And Moses, you know, and we see the suffering and the pain that came upon the children of Israel as they went through the wilderness. It was not the intention of God. It was not the purpose of God. God does not cheat his people. If God says he will do something, he will do it. It is us who miss the way. When you talk about 40 years in the wilderness, it was a permissive will of God. It was not the divine will of God. The divine will of God was to leave Egypt, come to Mount Sinai, and be in Mount Sinai for a year so that they are mentored, they are prepared to take over. And then from there, it was only about three months, and they will enter into the land of Canaan. But because of the rebellion of the people of God. You see the word of God says, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. The Bible says, God has prepared a day that is called today. That day today, his word when he speaks to us is lifted into our face, into our hearts, into our consciousness. So that we can listen to the word and obey and be blessed. So when the Lord was sending them to go to Egypt, or, I mean to go out there and spy the land, it was true that God was going to give them the land. But then, because of their rebellion, we know what happened. Therefore, in the 40 years, Joshua and Caleb followed the Lord. They went together, they were together. And he was his servant to a point where that wherever Moses went to the mountain, Joshua would stay and wait until Joshua comes. So this particular day, God gave him a shock. He said, it, the word of God begins there by saying, after, and this is after God took Moses and showed him the land. And he said, this is where they missed the mark. This is the land which I swore to Moses, I mean to Abraham, land flowing with milk and honey. And then he had a time to see it. And I want to encourage you, brethren, even if it takes a long time, even if it will be just the final days of your life, what God promised in your life, he will make sure that it comes to pass and that you see it. So he lifted up. Moses to the uh, top of Mount Pisgah and he saw it and after he saw it, the Lord allowed him to die and God buried him. God attended a burial ceremony. 
He was the bishop, he was the pastor, he was the elder, he was everything. When they were returning the soil, I don't know whether, which angels were doing the job. God witnessed that. And then he comes to Joshua and he says, Surprise! Moses, my servant, is dead. That is a shock. Number two, Joshua, arise with your people and go over this Jordan. There is no discussion about leadership. You have already been qualified. There is no discussion about vetting and debating in parliament. No, you have been chosen. Because Moses has finished his business. It is now your era. God has opened an opportunity for you. It was very difficult. And as a result of this, God had to speak to him. Matter of fact, when you see from verse 1 to number, number 9, all what God is doing is actually instructing him, building him, working in his heart so that he comes to terms. I want to say this to us, and this is where I got this title, The Oil of Influence. You see, when we talk about oil, we are talking about anointing, isn't it? We know that the kings were anointed to become kings. Prophets were anointed to, come, to, to become prophets. People were called into offices with the, with the anointing. In other words, it was a testimony that the Lord was working in that individual and he was calling him to go out. Now, one example is the story of David. You see, David, God had begun to work in the life of David a long time ago. But in this particular time, Joshua, also the same way, God had been working in his life for a long time. And therefore, he, say, he comes and says, now, in the words that he was speaking, he was actually influencing. He was pouring oil of acceptance, oil of enablement in every area of his fears. Let me just finish with this introduction so that I can give you the outline of my message and then I sit down. Oil, you know, oil is likened with the Holy Spirit, referred to as the finger of God. Oil was used as a public approval of one's calling. We know that. Oil was an outside demonstration of God's work in the inside. It was a declaration. This individual has been chosen. So here... God is approving and choosing Joshua through this word. It was a process of anointing the heart and the mind. And you see, these are two major trouble areas. Because if one is not settled, the other one is not settled. That's why God, the, Paul says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and the minds in Christ Jesus. So the Lord was dealing with those two problem areas. The issues of the area of the heart and the area of the mind through the word that was coming out. Praise the name of the Lord. So he was, it was a process. He was anointing him. He was anointing his mind. Bringing information. He was anointing his heart to believe the information. Who will believe the report of the Lord? If you believe the report of the Lord, it will change you. It will transform you. It will take you to places that people never imagined in their lives. It will lift you up. It will give you opportunities in life. Where the doors have been shut, the doors will open. Where you have been kanyagiwad for many years, God will make them to unkanyaga you and lift you up. If you obey the voice of the Lord. Shall we say amen? Amen. amen. It was a sign that that individual was fully owned by God. He was making a declaration. You know, Joshua, you are mine. I am with you in this business. 
I am going to walk with you. I am going to walk together with you. Praise the name of the Lord. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. When you look at the personal application, the Bible says there in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11, Moses was saying, if you obey the words that I have commanded you, the Lord will give you a blessing of a thousand times. What he's trying to say here is that he's going to give you an anointing of a thousand times and more. He is going to give you a divine enablement to be able to achieve what God had, has intended for you. I, say, I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It was also a time. You know, the, the word influence, the word influence means to, be a, to become a compelling fo force, an action or a process of producing results. You will be a person who will re 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 uh, produce results, a person that exacts influence. At this particular time here, at the end of that conversation, it was like a declaration that Joshua was fully influenced by God. And that's why when he came, matter of fact, there was no even discussion that I, I have been told this. He came down and told the people there, call the elders, bring the Ark of Covenant, because we are crossing over. I say, God gave him seven things to deal with his problem areas. And he gave him five commands that he should obey. And don't worry about time. I know you're finishing that time. Or even before that time. But please listen to this word. Don't miss the point. Amen. Don't miss the mark of what the Lord is saying to us. You see the word of God says, He who has an ear, let him hear. And I'm praying that you not just listen to my preaching you will hear what the Lord is saying to you. There are areas of fears in your life, but the Lord is working out in them. There are problems, there are issues of life in the families, but the Lord is working as you hear the word. There are issues concerning economy, economic issues, as we hear his word, the Lord is working something in your life. He is encouraging you. Now listen to the promises that God gave him. Seven of them. One of them he said, every place you tread your feet upon shall be yours. He was repeating what he had told his servant Abraham. When he told him, after they departed, we parted with the Lord, he said, look to the west, look to the south, look to the north, look to the east. And he told him, wherever you put your foot upon, I have given you that ground. Praise the name of the Lord. Including where even what Lord has taken illegally against you. It is all yours. But you must rise up and take a step. You must rise up and gain some grounds. There are some people today who only believe the promises of God from a distance. But they never put action in their lives. The church of Jesus has four major functions that we must work on, we must improve on. The church of Jesus is here on earth to worship the Lord. And we must increase, we must take a step to go further in our worship. We must increase in this area to go further and to learn how to wait upon the Lord. We must increase a little further, take a step at a time and be educated and be grounded in the matter. Let the church of Jesus today let the, in the church of Jesus, there should be worshippers. There should be, actually we talk about giants. People who know how to wait upon the Lord. People who have been renewed in their strength. People who have been lifted up for standing and knowing to define, to understand what the presence of the Lord is. Hallelujah. The other function is the function of evangelism. We must increase. 
in this area. When Jesus rose from the dead, he said, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore in my name. Preach and make disciples. We must take a step. We must take a step. And as we take that step, the Lord increases us. As we obey, the Lord increases. As we go, let me tell you, brethren, you will discover you have taken a million steps and the Lord has increased you tremendously. Don't just stand there. Be increased. Hallelujah. That, is, that requires also another preaching. The third thing is... Uh, Fighting spiritual battles. Dealing with the demons. I'm not here to speculate about demons. About demons from Indian Ocean, from Nigeria. And there are so many demons imported from Nigeria these days. Let us be careful. The ogas keep on telling us about every, every movie is just about demons. You find that the demons are more glorified than God. Let me tell you, there is no war, there is no tug of war between Satan and God. Yes. Satan knows his place. Yes. Hallelujah. And we as the children of God, the word shows us that demons, devil is under our feet. Yes. And we must increase in this area. We must be multiplied. When Paul is speaking, he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, against all spiritual wickedness. In high places, we have the victory. Satan is defeated. And we must learn to continue to give and put the enemy to where he belongs. As the Nigerian says, under our feet. We must continue to remind him that you, we are not here to negotiate. We are not sitting on a negotiate, negotiating table. Already his fate has been decided. Our work is to take the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Happened your what when angushi yaga amen kali? Atangalia tamuja angusha. Happened your what when angushi yaga amen? I see. I see many amen. Victory is ours. Victory is not for negotiation. Victory is on our side. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Kitugani. We must also increase in the area of ministry to one another. We must increase in loving one another. In having a concern for one another. In giving one another a crying shoulder. We must be increased in interceding for one another. We must be increased in standing up and sharing the word to encourage that brother, to lift up that brother. We must inc be increased that when a brother is lost, we can look for him. We can spend, we can put fuel in our car to go a hundred miles, two hundred miles to look for him and just to come and tell him, I have come here with one agenda, just to love you. Kama ubariki wagi uhapo shauri yako. Bwana sifiwe. Every place you put your foot upon, that is yours. Amen. Tell your neighbor, increase your ground. Multiply yourself. In prayer. In worship. In fighting spiritual battle. In loving one another. And in evangelism. The second thing he told him, he says, I shall, no man shall be able to stand against you. You are going into the battle. But I want to assure you as you enter into this battle, no one will be able to stand against you. What God failed of telling Joshua was, there will be so many battles against you, but no battle will succeed. No enemy will succeed. You see the responsibility was to destroy more than 31 kingdoms in the land of Canaan. There was I, Ai. 
there was Jericho. There were other kingdoms. And Joshua went out conquering, bringing them down, and making sure that the children of Israel settled. The promise is yours. Go out. The Lord is with you. Go out. Do not fear. Hallelujah. The Lord will fight for you. The battle belongs to God. Cast your cares on him. For he cares about you. Shall we say amen? amen? I'm sorry I cannot be able to preach on that either. Number three. Number three. See number three. Number three. I know it is number three. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. You see, Moses had prayed one time and said, unless your presence go together with us, we would rather die in this place. But you know what? God was with Moses. Even in the most hardest time and the most hardest challenge of his life. You know, when he was praying, when God called him in Exodus chapter 3, and he told him four things. He said, I have heard the cry. I have seen the suffering. I know God was very passionate about it. I know God knows the magnitude of the pain that we bear. One time, my middle daughter, I have three girls. Gentlemen who are here, two more. One is gone. I'm a grandfather. So two more. So see me. Tuonge pole pole. Pole pole. Now the second one, who is about 27, 28 this year, came and uh, she was hurting in her finger. And then she came and said, Dad, can you feel how painful it is? I am feeling a lot of pain. You know, I, I could not be able to, I, just, I had to come down into her level to touch her finger and lift up my hand very quickly and say, it is so painful. <laughs> and my daughter was so happy that I understand the magnitude of pain. I had no idea. But you know, our God understands the level of pain in our lives. And then God told Moses, I have come. How are you coming? I am coming through you. I don't know what to do. I will be with you. And from there, the Lord came in Moses. He gave him the language. When the Lord is with you, he will give you the language that is required in a place. Do you know he came up with a language that the protocol did not understand? He came there, somewhere there. And they said, that says the Lord, let my people go. And they looked at the protocol, they said, we don't understand this. And it soon reached the king. And he went there and he said, thus says the Lord, let my people go. That delivered the children of Israel. The, 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 the Red Sea parted. The wilderness, there was feeding. There was feeding. God gave them cuckoos. So many of them. Now you mathematicians, listen, count that. Count that. Seven million people eating, each taking one cuckoo is seven million cuckoos. And for us who cannot be able to be satisfied with one bird, we assume that each one of them took two. That is 14 million birds. And for those people who go a little further in feeding, let's give them the benefit of doubt and add one more. We are talking about 21 million times all the days that they were in the wilderness. He is a provider. He will be with you. When you come to a place of challenge, remember, he is with you right there where you are. Kama yoni poa semeni, amen. Kama inadonjo semeni, amen. Siyo tuachia hapo. Tunachia hapo, 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 hapo. Ndiyo ni kuja tena haraka. The fourth thing he says, I will not fail you. Sita kufail. I will not 
fail you. Now, I don't know how to explain a failure. Now, Pastor Kemani and his wife, Bishop Kemani, they counseled me as I was preparing to get married. And uh, they were just supposed to best us. But for one reason, they were, it was not possible at that particular time. So they knew the details of the plans that we were making to get married. Now some good brothers came and told me, you are getting married, suit is mine. You are getting married, shat ni yangu. Tai ni yangu. Nidi nuliwa viatu mbaka nguo zingine ambao hazitajwi. Kwa mudomo. Kwa mudomo. So nikifanya mipango yangu ya kuowa. Kuowa mstiana ambao nampena na hitu wa zaki. Tukifanya yu mipango ya kuowana. Hatu kuwa na mpango wa budget ya nguo. Kwa sababu isha nyunuliwa. Tukafika siku ya wiki ya mwisho. 19 long ago. Tukaingia Tuesday. Tunasema alikuwa meahidi na kulikuwa kuna mobile phone siku hizo. Hatu muoni. Tunapiga, hapatikani. Tunayanda ofisi, hapatikani. Siku ya tatu. Wednesday. Siku ya ne. Siku ya ne. A gentleman hears that I'm getting married from Mombasa. Nasema, sasa mimi siwezi kuja kwa harusi katika mipango. Najua kuna mpango mingi lakini chukua hiyo pesa na akapeana likuwa nafanya kazi na Kenya Power. Akapeana ikaingia kwa hiyo mese yao. Yani ilipe, alipeana jana usiku ikifika saa saba pesa imeingia. Pap mukononi. Na nikaenda little red. Nikanunua suti. Na nikanunua shati. Na nikanunua viatu na socks na vingine vyo. <laughs> to fail somebody is to give him a promise that you cannot be able to for, pro, provide. It's simple that. So he says, I will never fail you. He did not even tell him, I cannot fail you. He says, now and the future. In every hurdle, in every area of challenge, you can count on me. I will be there. Hallelujah. Which is number five. Number five, he says, I will not forsake you. Let me just illustrate that one. To forsake somebody is when you are walking together and then a danger comes. Like we heard of a story of a person who was supposed to get married to a certain lady and they were in a team. And then the Manmorius came. You know Manmorius? The manmans. The bad boys. Oh, Manmorius. They descended on them with threats. And this brother who was supposed to marry this sister actually took off. Not to look back. Went completely. Forsook them, left them. Whatever happens to them, that is what God was telling Joshua. In your challenges, you can count on me. I will be there. In your battles, count on me. I will be there. Tell your neighbor the Lord will be there. See na donjo. Number six, he said, you shall divide the land to Israel. He tells him, in this operation, I have lifted you from nothing into everything. De facto, he was the prime minister. He was the president. In charge of all land transactions. Whatever decision was to be made concerning Manasseh, it was him. 
concerning God, concerning the priest, it was him. God brought him in a place of responsibility. And you know what, brethren? I feel there is an oil of influence to take you a little further. A little further from where you are. The oil is being poured. Amen. Don't ever just look at people driving. You will get there. Don't just look at people prospering. And feel like a kewaru. You will be there. Hallelujah. In the timing of God. You will be there. One time I took, me I'm very generous. And my wife says so. Says sometimes I can even, okay. <laughs> I took a family for lunch. I bought them food, good food. At that time, now that is about 30 years ago. That was beyond even my means according to the standards of income, 15, 20. That's what we were earning at that particular time. 15, 20 is 1,520. Now, we had lunch together, and it was very good, just for fellowship. And then later on, the same individuals, in the time of challenge, they said, other than the gray suit that he wears, and eating good food, in these hotels, he has nothing. He has nothing. Unajua yoni vita kubwa? Vita kubwa. Na hakuna vita kali kuliko vita ambao unapigwa na marafiki wako. No wonder in the Bible, in the book of Acts, when there was a challenge from within, the Lord dealt with it seriously. And the issue of this person giving land. And then Ananias and Sapphira come in. God dealt with the issues in the inside. Seriously. So that the work of God could be able to go on. Hallelujah. I want to say to us here. God will eventually bring you there. Eventually God brought me there. To where they were saying, I am not there. And I surpassed by many miles. God is a provider. Uh, come on. Yeah, Mwisho, he says, I will be with you. Seven promises. I will be with you. He told him that. Amen. And you see, when you see follow that you find the bible says god was was with joseph and he prospered him god came to gideon and he assured him of his the presence of the lord i will be with you amen the lord is with you and as far as the lord is concerned you are a warrior you can make it shall we say amen the seven promises. And then Joshua was told, in the three minutes, I want to wind up. What you are supposed to do. Then he says, that is verse 6, verse 7, and verse 9. He says, be strong and of good courage. Amen? In other words, I have already addressed your fears. That if you take a step, I am there. I will not fail you. I will not leave you. Are we together here? He has already given him the, the assurance. He has given him the insurance. He tells him, I will be with you. I have come here today to say to you, my brother, my sister, the Lord is with you. And the Lord believes in you. He knows you can make it. Amen? Be strong and be of good courage. And then he told him in verse 7, Observe to do all 
what is in the law. Joshua, it is not your responsibility to write the law. Moses wrote the law. Moses was in that mountain of God. And God gave him the law and the details of the law. Your work is simple. Read and put it in your heart. David says, your word, O oh God, have I hidden in my heart. Brethren, one of the key to revival in the history of the church, it is when people exalt the word of God. It is when people read the word of God. When people give the word of God to where it's supposed to be. When people resign themselves and allow the word of God to be exalted in their lives. That is a key to revival. Amen. So he told Joshua, your duty, your responsibility is to observe. You cannot observe without reading. Spend time to read. Read it. Read the story of the Bible. Read the story of Moses. Read the story of Abraham. Read the story of Joshua. Read the story of how God dealt with the children of Israel. Read the story of Esther. Read the story of Ezra. Read the story of Nehemiah. Read the story of prophet ne uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and others. Read them. Observe. After you have read, observe. Because it is in the observation that the Lord brings in a word. Lifts up a word for the season, for the time, for your need in that particular time. Shall we say amen? amen. Number three. He says the book shall not depart from his, your mouth. Verse eight. In other words, what you have read and observe. Can you go ahead and declare? Can you be there to announce the word of God to the people. Can you come as one who comes in the name of the Lord? The fourth thing that he told him, and I'm finishing, he said, be not, be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. When the enemy rises, don't be afraid. You see, the word of God says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, all the time, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. The standard has already been lifted. So if when unapofika mahali kama adui anakaa na kuchekelea, kumbuka the standard is lifted. Don't look at the strength of the enemy and you faint. Stand still. You shall see the salvation of the Lord. And the final thing that he was told, don't be dismayed. I was struggling with that word, afraid and dismayed. Being dismayed is actually now looking at the enemy and then you say, I know I cannot fight. I know I cannot make it. I know this one, you are much stronger than I. So just do whatever you want. That is to be dismayed. Don't give the enemy a room. Hallelujah. Even if you are the last person remaining, stand still. You can put a thousand to flight. And if it's just the two of you, you put ten thousand to flight. If it's just the three of you, it is hundreds of thousands. If it's a thousand of you, brethren, you can shake the city. Church is a mover and a shake, a shaker of communities. Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has influenced me. He has given me the oil of influence. Amen. It is a process of divine enablement. He has anointed me to preach. He has anointed me to heal. He has anointed me to deliver. He has anointed me to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. God 
was working those details in the life of Joshua. I am with you. Do you know what? The word, if your problem is sickness, the Lord does not, appro uh, you know, the Lord does not come approaching you about guidance. He will speak to you about healing. If your problem is fear, he will not talk about prosperity. He will address the issue of fear. If your problem is relationship, he will not begin to talk to you about preaching the gospel. He will actually address your fears so that he can take you and lead you through your fears to deliver you from your fears. Si medonjo. Unajua nikijaribu kuongezea nitaharibu. Tusimame. Hebu nyosha tu mkono wako. Nyosha mkono wako. Najua hapa kuna watu wengi sana wamebatizwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Worship us in this place. I want us to receive this anointing through worship. Can we begin to worship the Lord? Ya mama kazikira mama. Ura baba kazikira mama raba zikata mama. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. We worship you Lord, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jehovah God, you have spoken your word to our lives. Jehovah God, your word has brought in assurance of who you are in our lives. You have told us to be courageous. You have told us, Father, to go to move forward. Oh, Rabba Baba Zikanta, Masikanta, Mima Rabba Baba Zikanta, Rabbi Baba Baba Zikan, Shika Rabba Baba Baba Baba. Just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Thank you, Jehovah Father, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus.